Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if you could take one second out of your uh, time, and thank you very much for your viewership. Just click a like, uh, help the program out, uh, share, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. So, in the famous words of Teddy KJB in Rounders, one of my favorite movies, cold classic, there's a time he turns to Mike, right, the main character, and says, I feel very unsatisfied. Ironically, I just did a terrible Russian accent considering I'm Russian. It's not here nor there. Anyway, after yesterday's really, really aggressive move, um, great job by the Bulls reclaiming uh, four of the major benchmarks above the 50-day moving average. We talked about it last night in the video that there was a possibility we can get a res day today, Right. Uh, a possibility to get an inside day for the day. just to, you know for the bulls to you know kind of get their you know seed legs under them just to take a little deep breath honestly and I didn't say this in last night's video I knew this was a possibility I just didn't think it was going to happen I really thought we were going to get a day two really aggressive big move but again it's one of those situations that I never put the FOMO into somebody especially uh, somebody's watching my 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 content. Just because I know new traders are so impressionable, if you get them all amped up, right, you're going to have a lot of emotions uh, for the next day. And there's something I say all the time, uh, if you have no expectations, you have no disappointments. Well, I had some expectations today. I really thought we would have a day two uh, big move. Uh, we didn't. We rested. That was the other part of our equation we discussed uh, last night in the video this morning at uh, morning strategy and that kind of played out that way the market did absolutely nothing today uh if you look and that's a good thing by the way right that's actually a very good thing yeah you saw the nasdaq uh down 16 points the s p squeaked out a seven point game built on yesterday's move and the dow jones industrial average was up like 32 points and when you look at a lot of names today they you know just barely they just hung out they just absolutely hung out but the fact that the market did not give it back, right? And that was the biggest worry uh, after any single day that the market reclaims a big level that the market the next day is going to give it back. The fact that we did not give it back and the fact that two out of the three uh, indexes actually price improved, that's a good thing. Funny thing is the Qs were actually up seven cents in the day. So the fact that we had lighter volume on a rest day, um, it means the sellers are comfortable. The fact that we didn't see any aggressive put buying coming in that means the sellers are very very at ease at these levels and that's exactly what you want to see if you're an active trader and you trade technology names yeah we'll get to the pivots you know you had an amazon pop you had a google pop that we talked about last night in the video but you didn't get a second day in the video pop matter of fact not only did you not get a second day in the video pop last night apple came out with news basically that they're going to make ai chips in-house so they took down nvidia the problem was i was holding a runner in nvidia i was up about 21 points in nvidia on my runner and my runner got stopped out today which kind of sucks but it really does show you how people are so quick to to jump on every single headline when you, if you actually sat back and you thought about it well it's not going to take you know it's not going to take uh you know apple 30 minutes to make these chips it's gonna take them years three five ten years uh, to get these chips around for how long they were working on their car, and then it just never happened. So, you know, traders shot first, asked questions later. The good thing is NVIDIA actually had uh, what we call an inside day, and that's all it was. Um, and you kept on seeing a lot of coal buying despite, uh, despite um, you know, despite weakness in the names. Uh, we still continue to see 930, 950 weeklies come into the name. Um, so that's still very, very good. Again, this is, you know, this, this is still building above that 900 level. Again, I'm still waiting. I, I still think if this stock doesn't come back in the next couple of days, 
I think by Wednesday, Thursday, this thing will start attacking the top of the range here. So super bullish action from individual names. If you look at the individual names, we'll get one name that is not, actually two names uh, that is that are not acting well. We'll get to them in a second. But look at some NASDAQ names, right? And you can just kind of see kind of the day. So let's kind of, kind of reverse engineer this. So this was our, you know, this was our game plan for today. Uh, you had Apple, you know, again, after I recorded the video, the news came out. You had Apple chip news five years away. It might rest today, have an inside day. It's exactly what happened. If it shakes off, you know, if it shakes off news, the 922s if it got rejected twice. If it gets to get over, it should go. Obviously, did not. Uh, Microsoft, you know, I love the Microsoft chart. It was just so little liquidity. So I got along with the stock. It went up like 60 cents or so, nothing. There was no liquidity. It came back in and lost like 87 cents. You know, it's, it's irrelevant. You know, just it's what, it was just one of those days that there was just not enough juice on the majority of stocks to push them through. But that's okay. Again, that my whole theory is loose pennies to make dollars. Uh, we talked about Amazon last night and Google. Uh, Amazon actually did okay. You had this sneaky pivot, uh, 88.74 and 89.77, stopped at 190. And then it kind of, you know, did nothing for the rest of the day. Uh, Reddit had a really nice earnings quarter. Uh, it is actually surging uh, after the close, up about 13, 14%. Uh, Google definitely had the biggest move of the day. The problem is I miss Google, okay? I, I literally just had such a quiet day. I I lost some money on, on Microsoft, you could call it lo losing some money. Then I bounced Tesla, made some money back. Then I tried to reject Tesla, didn't do anything. You know what I mean? So it's like one of those irrelevant days. But again, as you get older in this business and you start removing yourself from that first two, three years of the honeymoon stage of trading that you have to do something every single day, that you have to find something to trade, once you get out of that stage, you're going to really appreciate the days that, hey, you know what? You recognize there's an inside day. You recognize that your channels were contracting instead of expanding. And those days, they're okay. They're okay. Take a mental res days those days. You know, take a take a step back because again, whatever you like today that rested is probably more chances than not is going to wake up tomorrow. So you had a really big move on Google. I just unfortunately missed it. Uh, 68.83 needs to build. Here was uh, Google, right? So it took out this whole channel. You guys remember last night we talked about it closed right at the top of the channel here. So I just, I just missed it. I, I just literally missed the pre-market highs. And this thing actually closed near the highs. This is a really, really big move on Google. Um, let me see what else. I think that was it. I mean, I think that was it. I don't think there was anything else today. But yeah, I don't think there was anything else there. So it was a very, very quiet day. Uh, if you were able to, you know, to get a couple of things today, that's great. If not, it's not a big deal. Guys, remember, and you'll really fully understand this as you get, you know, longer and longer and year in, year out of this business, being up a little bit or being down a little bit is a big deal when you're a brand new trader. It is. It's a, it's a huge deal because especially if you're a brand new trader in your first two, three years of development, you're still trying to build up your account. So, you know, every penny is like, is a big deal, right? But as you get older and you realize that, well, you know what I mean? Up a little bit is exactly the same thing as down a little bit or flat. It's literally the same thing. Uh, it, it, it's the, the numbers game is only important when it's exaggerated, right? Obviously, when you have that premium hand, like yesterday, you have this 25-point move on NVIDIA, you had a big move here, big move there. That's an important day, right? Uh, the second half of that flip of that coin is the day that you know nothing is going on, but you're still pushing and pushing and pulling and pushing, and you turn nothing into something. And basically, you're not even losing money, you're giving your money away. So the days that end up a little bit, down a little bit, I know it's a big deal now as you're growing your account and you're growing your develop. but I'm telling you, once you hit like that year, six, seven, eight, it's not going to make a difference. It really is not going to make a difference. Once you hit like 10, 15, 20 years, it's going to be just literally take a mental deep debriefing of the action, take a deep breath and everything will be okay. Some stocks are actually setting up uh, pretty well uh, in both directions for tomorrow. Let's start off with Netflix. And, you know, Netflix had a crappy quarter, or at least, you know, didn't have a great response to the quarter. But slowly but surely today, it got above the 50-day moving average, right? And it actually closed at the highs of the day while other stocks did absolutely nothing. So that's a very, very important point. Keep an eye on this thing tomorrow. If it could continue to build over the 50-day moving average, maybe this thing gives, you know, gives another wake-up call. This thing looks actually really, really good. 
Uh, Amazon uh, for tomorrow in case the market continues. You know, watch the top of the channel here. This is the yearly highs uh, that got tested today. Came up a little bit short, but tested today. See if it could get above this channel here for a nice extension move. A uh, couple of names that we're definitely watching on the downside. So Coin came out with earnings, right? They didn't do anything. They got rejected off the 50-day moving average. Look how close this thing is to the bottom of the range here, right? Again, it's an old theory. Whatever doesn't go up and, this, and it doesn't reclaim a major supply, well, it has to go down. Well, it doesn't have to go down, but it probably does go down. Let's keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. If this thing starts getting below uh, the May 2nd lows, who knows? Maybe we could go, go all the way back down uh, under 200. Keep an eye on that as well. And last but not least is testing. So if you guys remember a couple of days ago, you know, I had the conversation piece of, well, the stock moved nicely. You know, the earnings were engulfed. The bad earnings were engulfed. And I asked the question, well, when does it come an important point when somebody's going to actually turn around and say, well, the stock did have the worst quarter in 12 years. When's that going to come into play? That's exactly what's happening here, or at least setting up that way. Uh, yesterday, we had a you know, pretty good trade to the upside off that sneaky four-day channel. But now this is the lowest close in the whole formation, guys. You see this? This is literally the whole close, the lowest close. Now, here's where it gets tricky tomorrow. Not tricky, but this is where it gets interesting, or at least I'm very, very interested in this level. So I want to keep an eye on last week's lows because if it starts losing last week's lows, we could get a move all the way back to the 50-day moving average support of roughly around 172, 173. That's not where the big trade is, right? Three points, three, four points is still pretty good, but that's not where the big trade is. Any close below 73, that's where things can start getting interested because any close below 73 on Tesla on, on the closing basis, then it gives back the 50-day moving average and the big, big run that we, we, we witnessed on earnings and a couple of days after, all that goes away really, really quickly when the bears take back control of this demand zone. So it's very, very important to watch Tesla tomorrow. It'll be a two, it'll be a two-part scenario, at least for me. Uh, the first move will be cash flow off the bottom range into the 50-day moving average. And then if it closes below the 50-day moving average, that's when I'll try to uh, get a bigger move, especially on an overnight uh basis. So tonight, you know, look, you know, go through your charts, uh, whatever it didn't rally, you know, whatever it didn't rally in the last couple of days. But it's poised. Hey, you know, you can definitely keep an eye on. Uh, look, is it possible we get a double inside day tomorrow? Remember, guys, the Qs had a big run, right? Had a really big run from the 420s to the 440s, right? 20 points in four sessions and built on uh, yesterday's reclaiming of the 50 days. So you might need, you know, maybe you need a little bit of more time uh, for the market to get, you know, to rest a little bit for the next leg up. But if we do rally, you know, keep an eye on NVIDIA, keep an eye on Netflix, you know, watch, you know, watch Amazon tomorrow. Google continues to act uh, really, really well, should be definitely considered uh, on dips. And the most important part is, guys, don't guess. So you see people all the time talking about the market now is overbought. How, could, how the hell can the market be overbought? This is, we're, we're day two above the 50-day moving average. It's like, when somebody said the market's oversold the first day we lost the 50-day moving average and the queues literally went from 435 to 413 in three days. It, it doesn't make any sense. It, it, these are big levels. These are not just little levels. These are big levels. So the longer the distribution takes place on that level, the higher probability everything else gets pulled back. Again, the bull's job, continue to build over the 50-day moving average. The bear's job is to lose it. Our job is to stay patient, get research, be ready on both sides of the ch uh, of the charts. Uh, and the most important thing that you have to remember, especially as you get older in this business, when the market rests, you rest. When the market gives you jacks, queens, kings, or aces, that's where you attack with extreme prejudice. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get a lot more uh, seamless action. Again, like Teddy, G uh, Teddy KGB said, I feel extremely unsatisfied. I'm Russian and I messed that up. Guys, have a great night, everybody. I'll talk to you tomorrow.